Hey guys, MC Fix It here. We're going to show you four different ways that you can learn to connect wires. Uh, the first way is just simply splitting it and putting some tape around it. The second one is a butt connector with heat shrink wrap. The third way is a heat shrink wrap connector, which is very similar to the other, but really good for wet areas. Um, uh, then solder with some heat shrink wrap. So you please stay tuned. Uh, we're going to help you be able to get, if you have a split wire or a wire that has damage, um, where it's completely corroded out and you need to cut it out and add new wire, this is how you can do that yourself. These are the tools that you will need to complete these four different things. You're going to need tape, you're going to need a butt connector, um, you're going to need a heat shrink wrap connector, um, some form of stripper. Uh, this has the crimper for both of the connectors. Um, you're going to need solder, um, and that is a standard resin core solder 6040. Really important that it's the 6040. Um, don't go out and get any of the other kind of varieties. Um, you will also want a thing of flux. Um, really important to have flux as well. You are going to want to have helping hands tools, especially if you're soldering. Uh, there's a variety of ways you can solder with like the electric plug-in, battery pack, butane, and they have even bigger ones for things like um, battery cables and making terminals and things like that. Um, you're going to want a heat gun, grill lighter, or just a hand lighter. Make sure you got safety glasses, you got a wet sponge, and you have... Uh, gloves you're really going to want for safety to have gloves a well ventilated room and have glasses you do not want uh solder splashing up on you also there is lead in solder if you're doing some of the other methods you don't have to have the gloves i prefer the gloves um again gloves are pretty cheap and expensive uh keep you safe um also there is a big metal piece back here that is when you're soldering so you don't drip any of the solder or even the flux onto anything and start a fire. This is a fake wood table. You would not want to start a fire with that. You will also need heat shrink wrap. Um, that's up at the top and there's a variety of colors which matches the different sizes. Um, and even on this tool, one of my favorite things about this tool is it shows you the different sizes, 22 to 18 gauge, which is the smallest you can use. That's what you do. And then also down here is where you strip it. And then you have 16 to 18 and 12 to to 10 and each of those kind of walk you through what size you need in here what size you need and the heat shrink um, and it just kind of all kind of works together um, this tool is pretty cool but it's only for stripping it's an automatic stripper as you put it in there it strips it um, doesn't really do a whole lot more besides that that's why the two-in-one works a little bit better and I even have uh, a pair of Something to just kind of crimp down. Um, if you have any bit of wiring kind of sticking up before you do a solder, um, or if you need to spin the wire um, for one of your connectors, it's always good to have something you can get a little bit of a, a crimp on that's not this kind of a crimp for a connector. Um, just kind of helps keep everything together. And so that's all the tools that you need for the project. So the first way we're gonna do this is a split. And literally, we're just splitting the wires and then we're going to tape them together. This is probably the most ineffective method um, because they can pull back apart. If it is in a place like your engine bay, you hit moisture and other things. Um, electrical tape does not last forever as well. So I'm just reeling out a little bit of electrical tape just to help me along in this. So the goal of this is to literally find where it is. I'm gonna do it on the back side. This is an 18 gauge wire. You're going to put it about a, just above a quarter of an inch, twist around a couple of times and pull out. That gives you a nice clean cut. So you're gonna do that once, throw away a leftover. And then again, you're gonna do the same thing. Have about the same amount, twist it around pull it off and there you go so one of the things a lot of people will do here is they'll kind of spread it out a little bit kind of fan it out and just twist it around itself which as you can see this just doesn't really do a whole lot um, as you can see it kind of already has fallen apart 
and then they'll just take a piece of tape. This is not the recommended way, but a lot of people do this. Um, see, it's hard to do with gloves on too. Um, and then other times people will take it and they will just, I've seen car audio like this. So I'll just take the end here and just twist it even like this. Like they're gonna put some of the, some of the different kind of connectors and they'll just tape around it real cheaply like this and call it quits. Um, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna see how I can pull these apart, if I can pull them apart between the different ones. So that is the first one. Don't recommend this, but uh, you'll see a lot of people who do it. So I'm gonna throw it over there. So here is uh, way number two to do this, the second of four. Um, this is using a butt connector. It's this uh, little piece right here. It has metal on the inside, and you're gonna kind of crimp it down on there. Um, the first thing you're gonna do is get a heat shrink wrap, and you're gonna take, imagine this a lot longer, you're gonna take this and push it down on one side, kind of away from everything. Uh, then you are gonna go ahead and strip it just like you've done, seen on the previous one. Um, you want about a quarter of an inch. Find that number 18 right there. Spin it around and pull it off. I have to set that down. So I'm gonna show you the next one. Same concept, you're gonna go to that number 18 because it is an 18 gauge wire. Spin it around, pull it off. And the next thing I like to do is kind of just make sure these are nice and tight because you are going into a very small area. You're going to put this on um, and you do have to kind of watch where you crimp. The little red dot helps. Um, these ones are color coordinated, which help you 18 to 22 gauge wire. And so as you can see, I'm not on the end. I'm not in the middle, but I'm kind of between the two. As you crimp down, you started to see it expand. It will actually crimp on there. Same thing on this side. You want to be careful though that your heat shrink wrap is on there normally. Uh, the wire is a lot longer than this. And if you don't do it first, um, you got to redo your entire uh, crimp there. And so cut that off and put a new one on. And so you kind of shove it down, make sure it's good. Same concept going to that red one and you crimp down and on just like so. And then you put your heat shrink wrap over this. Um, it is important that your heat shrink wrap is long enough to cover whatever it is. So this is actually where you're going to take your lighter and you don't want to get really close. I like to put it down and go kind of quick back and forth, starting at the center, working my way to the edge and kind of rotating. And you will see this tube begin to shrink down on there. Again, starting at the beginning or the middle and moving my way to the end. And that right there, it's not 100% waterproof, but man, that right there is a lot better seal. Um, one of the downsides, and I wanted to show you this with the red one, as you can see, just a touch of burn mark that is coming from the lighter itself. Um, and then you kind of just let that cure for a few seconds, um, and then you should be good, ready to go. And here is the third way. This is with a heat shrink connector, which looks very, very similar to um, the butt connector, but it is a little bit different. This is actually heat shrink on the ends, which kind of saves you the step of putting heat shrink wrap on there. I'm gonna use a different stripper this time. This is more of an automatic stripper. Um, and so it does have little gauge marks down there. And so you just push it and it takes care of it. Show you that again in one second on the next one. Get that nice and straight. Put it to the same gauge mark right there. And you're just one touch, which is actually kind of nice. Um, the downside is there is no crimp on this. So that tool is just for stripping. Um, you go ahead and put this on here and you match it up. Now my, my wire is just probably just a touch too thin. We're going in that 16 to 14. Um, so my wire gauge is just a little bit off. Um, the really nice thing about this is you can actually see where you're supposed to crimp, unlike the butt connectors. And remember, you don't have to put the heat shrink wrap on, which is something I have forgotten a number of times. Um, so that is one of my favorite things about these. These are much more expensive though, about two to three times the cost. Um, 
but I think they do probably work a little bit better um, for uh, like engine bay um, or someplace that has the potential getting damp. And so the gun is really easy. There's two settings on this one. One or two, kind of like a hairdryer if you've ever used one of those. Same concept. I'm just gonna put it on one and you will see it. I line up putting it on too. And you can see it starting to go around it. It does take a little bit longer than the other one, at least with this uh, gun. It's not probably the best one, but you can see how well that thing has just adhered over just a couple of seconds. Um, this is a much thicker one than the other uh, heat shrink wrap. So there is your third way of doing it. Again, at the end of this video, I'm gonna test all these and kind of show you kind of what the pool tolerance is. Um, you're not necessarily gonna to wanna to ever pull your wires once you do it, but just so you know, I'm going to be doing that just to kind of give you an idea. So you're gonna have your wire. And uh, the first thing I like to do is go ahead and put the heat shrink wrap that is the right size over it and kind of hold it down off to the side. You should not be using these ones unless you have a different variety because you cannot get it long enough. You're going to need about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And so you put that number 18 again. And we're going three quarters of an inch to an inch to really be able to get this solder good. Spin it around. And that does happen from time to time where it doesn't want to take. That one did. Another thing is if you broke off a bunch of these... Uh, little threads, you're gonna want to just go ahead and start fresh again. Um, this is a little tool I kind of sometimes do to know exactly where. Have the other one almost in the same location. So you kind of have an idea to make it about the same size. I'm gonna go ahead and set that down. You wanna make sure again that you don't lose that heat shrink wrap because um, you are going to need that. That is how you finalize this one. So there's two different ways. One way is a fanning. And so you literally fan out the wires. Um, I've not found a huge difference in how well this works, uh, especially with car stuff. Um, so the fan goes like this and then you just start twisting over itself. And that's about it. The other one, I'm gonna pull it, use the same thing again. Um, is some people call it a lineman. I call it the X because that's what it looks like. Uh, it helps me just remember, so I just call it the X. And what you do is about halfway between both of them, think of the X-Men, uh, you just fold over and start twisting around. Um, sometimes the X one, when you get to the ends, um, does not look as clean as the other. So sometimes what I do, I'll go ahead and grab a pair of needle nose or something that has a flat edge on it that you can kind of just pry down a little bit because um, you don't want that peeking through. And then I went ahead and wrapped my little clamps. Um, and so you want to put this heat shrink wrap away from everything that you are about to solder. And I put just a little bit of electrical tape on the top and bottom that will help from damaging the insulation. You're gonna to wanna to be on a hard surface. You're gonna make sure you have just a little bit of a wet, damp sponge. And so one of the things you'll want to do next is take flux and you just take a little chunk on your hand and this will help clean and it can, doesn't have to look super pretty, um, but this will help really kind of clean and allow this solder to wick up. And that's the goal right now is to wick up that solder. Um, so you're forming pretty much the best connection you can. And then uh, you're gonna go ahead and start heating that up. Um, be really careful not to touch any of the metal because it can and will burn you and it gets very, 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 very hot. And so your flux will just start to, uh, to kind of burn in. That's what you're wanting. Kind of burn off I guess is more you see it kind of steaming a little bit and then with soldering 
the goal is to heat up the wire and on the underneath part but then the solder actually goes on the top and with that flux it wicks around so this is really thin solder some of the other solder is really thick so it should go a little quicker yep you can see it's just beginning to start to do it So as this is heating it up, it does smoke a little bit. That is totally okay. As long as you are in a well-ventilated room. You can see the silver. That's what you're wanting. That means the solder is working and it's wicking in. You're not puddling it up. You are letting it wick in, which is the goal. That's why this connection works so well because you're kind of making all of it metal. So all those little braids kind of become one big working unit. And you see it just kind of wick it up in there. That is exactly what you want. It does take a couple of minutes. Take your time. And that's it. Go ahead and clean off on your little rag. And then be careful because this thing still is hot for minutes and minutes and minutes afterwards. So I like to kind of unplug it completely and put it off to the side. And you can see I did have some splatter here. That was probably the resin as it was melting. And as you see this, um, that has become one solid piece now. You can barely even see the copper. Um, you give that a few more minutes, moments, not minutes, another 10, 15 seconds to get hard to kind of cool down. And then the next thing you do is you move this up and over. You want to center this. The best you can which is not always easy and then you literally just hit the button from the center and that heat sink wrap is get nice and tight around there so as promised i'm going to go ahead and show you the four different ones we've just done. First off, we just literally tied them together. Not the best method, just being honest. The next one, we did the buck connector. We did the heat shrink wrap connector. Uh, then we actually soldered. Soldering makes it look like it is the most natural. Um, these connectors work really well. Um, so do these connectors. Um, if you're in an area that can get damp, this is probably your best connector. This is probably your worst. Now's the pull test. You ready? One, two, three. Oh man, <laughs> that was like nothing. Just throw it in the trash. <laughs> Just being honest. Um, here's your basic butt connector. With that heat shrink wrap, I am literally pulling that just about as hard as I can. <clears throat> nope. This one will be about the same. And you have to remember, this is actually probably one size up. That's supposed to really be a 16 gauge wire. And that's solid. Um, but then the solder. Gonna wrap this one around and really give it a good tug. That thing is going nowhere. Um, and so that is the best three right there. The other one's in the trash. Don't even do it. Um, but people do it and that's why I did a video um, on it because you don't want to do that. Use a butt connector with heat shrink wrap. Use a connector that has heat shrink wrap, pretty much a butt connector with heat shrink wrap built in, or solder. Thank you guys for watching. If this was helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you have questions, go ahead and put those in the comment selection section below. Thank you guys so much for joining me today.